Welcome to Amazing Apps for the Primary Classroom, presented by Simon Hunt. This video was recorded last Wednesday, which was six, the 16th of November 2022, and uh, it was a fantastic session. It was sponsored by Atom Learning, which meant that uh, all 270 delegates were able to uh, come along completely free of charge. So thank you to our sponsors, Atom. Now, without any further ado, uh, let's move on to the video itself. I know that you're going to be inspired and enthused by uh, the next hour with Simon. So off we go. That's right. Perfect, David. And actually, just in case you was wondering, the real answer is muffin. So that is actually the real answer. And I'm saying muffin because from where I'm from in Oldham, we would call one of those things a muffin. I know you're thinking it's not a muffin, a muffin's one of those chocolate cake things and stuff. And I know people are screaming, it's a roll, it's a roll, it's not, it's a muffin. And that one answer of muffin is what I've written. In fact, someone else might have put a muffin. Does anyone else put a muffin? Because it's a little bit bigger than soft roll. It could be a soft roll, no cob. I'm sorry, I'm doing this because I'm just trying to watch the words as they say a live sort of jump on. But yeah, this is menti.com and in a moment, I'm going to talk about how I use this in my class, and I've used this in my year three, four class. I've used it in year one before and year six, and, I was, and I've used it for presentations, kind of like what we're doing now, and staff meetings as well. It's just a really engaging sort of website, and it's free. You don't need to pay for the um, expensive bit. You don't need that, but don't tell them I told you that. Okay, so I'm going to go back, and I'm just going to get onto my slides. There you go. People are still sending the answers. Okay, so this is – there you are. That's me. David, can you see me there? Is that coming up on my presentation? Okay, so that's in my lovely flowery shirt. I actually still have that. Um, so if anyone wants to, it's from Next. I don't know whether it's still available, but it's one of my favorite shirts. And that is me in my natural habitat, which is my classroom. So I'm known as Mr. Hunt. That's my teacher name, but my human name is Simon. So you can use my human name if you like to put it in the chat. So that's my Facebook page. It's Mr. Hunt's Ideas. I have my Twitter, my email, my website, and my Instagram there. And I want to get in contact or follow my social media pages, just drop me a follow on there. Facebook's the one I use mostly. Um, and what I like to do is I like to share the ideas that works well in my classroom. You, if you look on Facebook, there was one that I put on yesterday, um, which has done really well, a video which I'm going to share later on, which I've just added this afternoon because I thought, oh, I really like that. I'm going to pop that in. So that's what I like doing. The stuff that I live and breathe in my classroom is the stuff that I'm going to share with you. And I know it works because I've used it in my class and I still use it today. Um, so I work four days a week at the wonderful Tottington Primary School. It's an amazing place. And if you've ever been, I know David has been and we had uh, an awards there a couple of years ago. It's a wonderful place. And the reason why it's a wonderful place, it's got loads of these little things in the middle here. Kids, really happy kids. And, and that's why I love working at my school. So I work four days a week. And on the other day, I do lots of other things. So I've written a book about my daughter who's sort of wandering around at the moment. Delilah Rose, The Bogey Princess, which I'm sure you can tell is a really deep and meaningful book about bogey picking daughter. Um, but I also have done stuff for the BBC. So when it was lockdown, I did a lot of the live lessons that are on BBC. Um, I'm actually working with them for the next year, which I can't say much about, which I'm excited to be working with them over the next year with BBC Education. Won a few awards and stuff, but like I said, the most important thing for me is that I my, my teaching I love being in the classroom that's my favorite part of the week is when I'm in the classroom when I'm teaching my kids so oh and so today is the Wednesday wisdom I like the title and that hairstyle I've got there David is when it was locked down and my hair started to grow and grow and grow so I couldn't get it cut so I need to kind of change that picture the more um, current hairstyle but so the next hour um, and that's my issue I'm sometimes over talk but i'll try to keep it within the hour and um, we're going to talk about some websites and some apps and things that i use in the classroom ranging from eight early years all the way up to year six and even that you could use in the staff room as well so that's what i'm going to talk about today and the thing that you saw at the start was mentimeter.com now mentimeter.com is a wonderful website i'm going to share the website with you in a moment and I'm going to show you how I use it in the classroom. So I'm going to be jumping between pages here now. So hopefully things will go well. So there we go. That's the presentation that we've just done. And then most people said roll. So Mentimeter, you can just sign up for free. Um, I'll go back to my presentation. Menti.com, Mentimeter.com. And what you can do, you can create interactive presentations. Now, it looks a little bit like sort of kind of PowerPoint and those you know, Google slides. So I'm going to click a new presentation. I'm going to just put it as a test here. This is just how I create one. And what you can do is you can create interactive slides with different question types. 
and this is where my internet's going to go. So, uh, perfect. So, on the left hand side, you've got different slides, and on the right hand side, you've got question types. So, I'm just going to select, I did a word cloud there. So, I typed in the word cloud and I put in a, what was my question? It was, what is this? Um, my question was, what is this? And I put a picture, and I put a picture of a, a muffin. Yeah, it was a muffin, if you remember. And I can put a picture on here. And then when I click present, it automatically creates it for you. And then if you go to the code, it generates a code. And if with any device, iPad, Google, Chrome, whatever you use, you type in that code, and then children can send words to the screen. Now, the wordle that we did, the more that word is said, the bigger it gets, is great for things like catching vocabulary and catching children's ideas. So when they send stuff, they see the word go bigger. And what you can do is once you finish the that part of the lesson or catching that vocabulary, you can just then uh, click download and download it as a PDF. And then you can print it off and you can put it on your wall. So it kind of replaces that post-it notes on a wall and kind of repeated ideas. So that's the kind of Wordle side. There's lots of different ones. There's, an open, there's a multiple choice. So say if you wanted the children to do a blind vote so they didn't know who else was voting, um, you can create voting questions. Open-ended, which is more, again, let's move down. Go back and do a new slide. So you've got open-ended. So that's kind of where the children are writing sentences or the way we used it is we've said, right, we're going to interview someone. What question would you like to speak? What question would you like to ask them? And the children type it down, they send it to the screen and then you can save and print it out. So that's uh, open-ended. You've got scales, which you can put rated statements. Uh, ranking, where you can rank things. Q&A, which is very similar, just to just type in what your opinion is. And there's lots of different popular types of questions there. There's also content slides as well. So say if you wanted to use a YouTube clip, for example, and ask the children to, to type what their thoughts are about this YouTube clip. You click video just there. And what you do is you've got the video caption. So I'm just going to put my question type. So what do you think? There you go. Um, and everything you do on meant it's automatically saved. So it's on a cloud basis. Um, what do you think? And then I'm going to go to this this YouTube clip here, this BBC one, I'm going to copy the URL from the YouTube clip. I'm going to just paste it in there. Okay. And then I'm just going to click add. And what it'll do is it'll put that video clip within that slide. So when I click present now, there you go. Um, I can hit play on that YouTube clip. It'll play it. And then if the children have got thoughts or ideas about what's going on in the screen, they can type it in using the mentor code and it sends it to the screen and then it saves automatically. And the good thing about that is if you, and I'm sure any teacher that's used YouTube before, when you use YouTube, sometimes you'll put YouTube and you'll start the video and you'll have that sometimes random advertisement right at the start. That you're like, oh gosh, I've got 15 seconds of waiting for this. By using Menti, it gets rid of that. So if you put a YouTube clip within Menti, it gets rid of that bit at the start. So you won't have an advert in and you'll just hit play. And then you have your YouTube clip there. And it'll start without the advert. So that's menti.com. Um, I just thought I'd show you that because it's um, I've used it in staff meetings as well. It's just a really good thing, a really engaging thing to use as well. Now, like I said, I live and breathe this stuff. So here's my class a couple of years ago. We were, we were interviewing someone about um, belugas, I think it was. And I said, right, guys, we're going to ask some questions. Let's send some of our thoughts and ideas to the screen. So this is my year three class. They're typing their questions on, on the iPad and they're sending it directly. They're beaming it. They're going, boom, sending it straight to the screen. Um, through the internet. And then what can happen here now is we've got questions on the screen there. So you don't get a lot of repeat questions because the children can see what questions have been asked. Also, um, if we've got that child that say in a lesson was a bit, I'm not quite sure what to write here. What, what's the teacher asking me to do? I'm not, you know, you've got loads of live examples right in front of you there that the child can look at and then go, All right, I'll use that. Oh, that's what we're kind of after. And then you can download it and then save as a PDF, print it on your working wall, and then you've got it. So that's menti.com, mentimeter.com. And again, it's free. And you can pay for the paid for version, but you don't really need to. Um, you just basically don't need to. It's, the extra stuff is not really worth it. Um, but hopefully no one from Menti is on, is on this uh, call. I don't think they are, but if they are, it's wonderful. But if they're not, don't get the, don't pay for it. Okay, so um, I'm just going to talk about these things. That, um, visualizers, I was swore by my visualizer. I used it all the time. I used to have one of these ones at the bottom, the black one, the Ava one. And they were really good. But what used to happen is, if you've ever had them before, they kind of, mine used to sort of fall over. 
I mean, fall off my desk and they were quite, they're not very mobile. And the thing is now with the technology that we have, like iPads, iPad minis, um, Google devices, Samsung tablets, we can mirror our screen. So you have a mobile visualizer that you can walk around the classroom just by mirroring your screen to the, your interactive display. So I, we use, um, I use an iPad to teach with, and I'm going to talk about my favorite, favorite app on there in a moment. But to mirror your device is probably the biggest thing that I would say to do as a teacher. Um, and I use Air Server. So Air Server is a paid for version. I think it's about nine pound for a license for your PC. They do have free downloads where you can trial it for a few weeks. But if you are an Apple school, if you've got Apple TV, you can mirror your device through Apple TV. Um, a new free one at the moment that's going around is Let's View. It's very similar to Air Server. I don't think it does as much as Air Server, but it is a completely free one, Let's View. So it's the same thing. It's where you drag down and you can mirror your iPad, whatever's an iPad on the screen. If you've got a thing like a screen like a Clever Touch, most Clever Touch boards have Air Server installed already within the uh, screen, so you don't need to buy Air Server. If you have a Promethean board, a lot of Promethean boards, they have something called ActiveCast, which is basically the same thing. It's, it's already installed within the in the software on your board so lots of screens already have them and also now lots of panels and displays my tv downstairs if you have a samsung tv and um, they automatically have their own version of air server installed within the, the screen so the, you know use it and you, you can walk around you can take pictures you can share instantly children's work and i'm going to talk about that a little bit more in a moment now my favorite app that i love more than anything is good notes and when I, I use good notes every single day i used it in three lessons out of four today and what it is is it's kind of instead of standing in front of the screen and touching the screen and using the software within the screen i just mirror what's on my ipad using good notes to the screen and what i'm going to do is i'm going to share good notes via the uh, server now so you can sort of see what it looks like and the reason why i like it because it's quite simple it's got a few simple tools but it's done well and then I'm, and then i'm going to show you a bit of me using it in the classroom so if i talk too fast david just let me know because i get a bit giddy with stuff like this you know what i'm like okay so i'm just going to mirror my device now um, make sure I don't do it to the TV downstairs because my son will kill me, but all of a sudden my presentation starts jumping on the TV downstairs. Right. So I'm using Air Server there. Should be there now. There we go. So there you go. There's the Hunts TV. It's actually called the Hunts TV as well. So there you go. You want to go to Air Server, it's called the Hunts TV. So good notes. Here we go. Now it's iPad Pencil Compatitive. So if you can use your iPad pencil or you can just use your finger if you don't have an Apple pencil or a, a stylus. So I'm going to show GoodNotes. Now I use GoodNotes for loads of my lessons, staff meetings. It's kind of like it replaces all my files. It's all stored in one place. Now I'm going to hit new. So just to remind you, when I what's the stuff I'm showing you now is how I teach when I mirror my iPad to my screen. So I'm going to click plus. I'm going to click a new notebook. So these are your notebooks. So these is how I display. So you can choose your papers. So you can have square paper, line paper, dotted paper, blank paper. I'm just going to go with squared paper. There you go. I'm going to hit square paper. I'm going to click create. Now, as I teach in class, I don't have these tools up at the top visible. Okay. These tools at the top, they're not visible, but I'm just going to leave them visible now just so you can see what I'm clicking and what I'm pressing. Um, because when I use it in class, what I do is I just change it to, instead of mirror entire screen, I just mirror presenter page. So as you can see there, you can just see the page, whereas I've still got all the tools on my screen. It's just so when you're clicking things, the children can't see all the stuff that you click in, and they just see what they're meant to see. But just to make it easier to show what to do, I'm just going to leave that on there. Now, like I said, the reason why I like um, GoodNotes is because it's got a few basic tools. It has your pen tool there, so there's your pen. You can change the color of your pen, the thickness of your pen, and you can just zoom in and out. So I'll say if I was doing column addition, 36, add 12. There we go. So a bit of column addition. So I'm stood in the middle of my classroom and I'm just using my iPad and I can see what's going on in the classroom. The children can see the screen because I'm not stood in front of them, writing with my hand back to them, writing with it. So that's the pen tool there. So that's your pen tool. There is your rubber tool. So that's how to rub things out. You can change the size of your rubber. And you can just rub stuff out like that, just like as you would with an eraser. You've got your highlighter, so you can highlight things. There you go. So if you're highlighting a document, there you go. You can highlight stuff. You can change the color of these as well just by clicking 
uh, one of the colors, you can change it to a different color highlighter. Um, you've got your shape tool. I'm just going to rub this out as well. You've got your shape tool, which I'll talk about in a second, because say, for example, if you're doing a column addition, uh, let's go 36, add 12. Now, we always tell the kids, make sure you use a ruler when you're doing column addition. But then as teachers, we sometimes kind of do a wonky sort of column addition thing there. So we're not modeling it correctly. But if you hit that shape tool there, right in the middle, so it's um, that one just above there. When you draw a shape or a line, it makes it straight. So I can just go like this, and automatically straightens it for you. Also, it's quite often in maths and in subjects, you go, right, okay, I need to draw a circle. But when you try to draw a circle like this, it'll turn it into a circle for you. And um, you can have it filled. I can just have an empty circle. So if I'm drawing a triangle, I need a triangle super quick. Or I need a rectangle. I need to draw a rectangle. As long as you are a parallelogram or whatever you want to do, automatically does it for you. And the tool at the top here, by the way, sorry, the undo button, you can undo things there. So that's why I like it because of those really simplistic tools. You've also got stickers where you can put in like post-it notes and stuff. You can change, add post-it notes or whatever you like to add. Um, and then this one here, the laser pointer. So I use this all the time. Like I've just been showing you, I say, right, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. This is what we're looking at here. And you can also hit the um, button here so it sort of disappears after a moment. So you can see we're focusing on this part here and it disappears. But the most powerful thing is this bit here is a camera tool. So you can take a picture of a child's work and can annotate a child's work. And I'm just going to do that now. So you can use a picture that you've already got saved at the top there. Or you can just literally hit camera. I'm just going to go over to my book here. So say if we were doing insects, there we go. I'm just going to take a picture of that there. Boom. I'm going to use this photo. And I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it here. You can move the size and can go right. Okay. Boom. Now we've got it there. So say if you're doing a lesson, looking at the features, we're going to go, right, guys, I want you to look at all the features that you can see within this text. Okay. So we're going to look at what features can we see. And one of them will say, I missed Hunt, we've got, we've got a heading. And I can say, yes, here we go. There's, there's the heading. I can annotate and say, right, we've got a heading. And then you can go around, you can annotate, and you can do that with children's work as well. And that's what's powerful about it. At any point in my, cl in my class, they know that I can take a picture of their work and share it and display it and say, look at this amazing work that um, Andrew's just done today. Well, let's have a look. And let's have a look at some of the features as well. We can annotate it live. And because that can happen, the children are super proud of their work gets displayed on the board. And also you've got real life examples from your classroom. Okay, so that is good notes there. But another thing I want to share is I use white rows. Um, we use white, white rows in our school and we, if anyone uses white rows, you have the, uh, the booklets or you might want to show booklets or work that the children are doing. Now I save them on my device, my iPad, and my one cloud drive. And what you can do is you can just go to the plus sign and I'm going to import and I'm going to import one of the sheets from white rows. So if anyone that does white rows, you'll recognize these. So this is literally the lesson I did today. Um, where is it now? Plus I'm going to import. Um, any input you can import any PDF or any document. I'm going to go. It was this one that we did today. Yes, this is the one. There you go. So this is the exact same copy as the sheet that the children are working on today. So when we set off, I've got my children that are independent and they can get started. But I've, I've got my guys that are a little bit scrappy that need a bit of help. So we sit together. I mirror this to my screen and I can zoom in and can see exactly what they've got on their iPad. I can go right, guys. We're going to focus on this first question. So what times what equals? Okay, so let's complete the multiplications. Here we go. So we've got here. Let's just have a look at this first clover. How many leaves can we see? We can see three, Mr. Hunt. Okay, so let's put our number three in there. Okay, we can work together with this one. I'll just make it a bit thicker. There we go, number three. There we go. And times by how many? So how many of these can we see all together? Let's count them together. Let's do it together. We use a laser pen. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What number goes in here? It's eight. So three times eight is the same as or equals. What's the answer? Let's count up in uh, three, eight times three, six. And then as we work through, because it's the same as what the children have got in front of them, it's just really useful for them to see. And this can be any document or anything that you've got saved. So that's good notes, a whirlwind tour of good notes. But I use it, like I say, every single day. In fact, if I go into my good notes or my other good notes as well, I've got pages and pages of stuff. See, this is what I did here. You can see me annotating here. This is what we did a few days. Uh, in fact, this is the lesson I did today. This is what I was sharing today. 
Um, I've got other my people progress meetings. I've got um, documents. Um, I've got loads of stuff on there. And there's files and files of it. I'm actually so I'm not in presenter mode there, so you won't be able to see that. But that's good notes. The only thing I would say is make sure that when you do, if you do use it, use the presenter side so they just see the screen. So let me jump through here. I'm just going to show you my class before I jump to David in a minute. Um, I did say jump to and not on then, didn't David? <laughs> Let's check what I said then. Right, <laughs> that's, that was it. That was good notes. And there you go. So that's me using it in my class. And so we were looking at column addition. And as you can see, I'm stood in the middle of the classroom. So I'm doing a bit of a teaching bit here. We were doing some basic skills going over some column addition from last term. This is a few weeks ago on column subtraction. And I'm mirroring my device, walking around, talking to children what we can do. And I can jump in here. So one of my children here, they got a bit stuck. But because I was walking in and amongst them, I could say, oh, you just need to pop this number here. Oh, remember, we start on the right-hand side. And what is good is because um, the device is mobile, I give the device to the children. And then they work out some of the answers themselves. So it gives them ownership of their own learning. So I give them the device. They're talking it through. We have a little microphone so they can all hear what's going on. And then they're involved in the lesson as well. And it's natural. It's not, it's not they're, they're so used to doing it. You go to my class, my new class now as well, um, you'll see them naturally doing it. And they go, so there's my children explaining how to do this. And you can get a quick cup of tea or a quick drink of coffee while the children are leading your lesson for a couple of minutes. So it's quite useful in that respect as well. So that's a whistle top story of good notes. It's my favorite app. It's about three pounds, I think, 299. And that's my, if I had an iPad and I had to have one app on my iPad, that would be it. And I would mirror it to my device. Now I'm going to talk about something else that I've recently discovered which Dave is going to talk about just now. So this is the reason why we can offer this for free is because of Atom. And that's exactly what Dave is going to talk about for the next couple of minutes. So David, I'm just going to pass you over to you. I'm just going to stop sharing my screen. And if you share your screen now, it should be okay to try. That's, that's brilliant, Simon. Thank you. We've just had a question from uh, one of the, uh, the guests tonight. Uh, what microphone are you using, Simon? This one, um, it was a Black Friday. Um, oh, in the video in your class. Oh, I thought you meant this one. I thought I thought it was like I'm quite proud of this new microphone. And um, that's a Juno. That's called a front row Juno. So the, I have a little drop down pendant microphone. It's infrared within the classroom, so you're just talking in normal voice and it booms throughout the classroom. It's called the front row Juno. Um, Mike Joe, if anyone's interested in one of those, or if you just give me a shout afterwards or to speak to David, he'll forward on to me. I can send the details for that. But that's a, a wonderful thing that I use in the classroom. But that's a really good question. Yes. Um, yeah, that's it's called a front row Juno. Perfect. Thank, thank you, Simon. OK, so just while Simon has a, a quick break, um, I'm, I'm just going to show you all um, a video now from our, our sponsors, Atom Learning. Um, I, I, this is something I've been talking about with schools for the last couple of years, and I just love it. It's it's great uh, for so many things. Um, it, it, it amongst the many things that it does do is it, it's probably the best homework platform for Key Stage Two out there for, for, for English, Maths, and Science. Um, and I, I I still have to catch myself that it's that it's free, and it's really hard to. Uh, uh, to, for, for people sometimes to take you seriously when you tell them that it is free um but it but it really is so i'm going to show you a, a video now and uh, then i think uh, simon's going to give you a few examples so hopefully this will this will play okay <laughs> Sharing my screen. 
Okay, welcome back. Um, so, Atom, then, it, 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 it is a brilliant uh, homework platform. It has got the AI um, automated marking, which makes it fantastic uh, in terms of saving uh, teachers time. Um, obviously, all the resources are there. It means that you can that you can standardize the homework um, from from years three to six. It's just really, really good. So, um, if you would like to book a demo, a one to one demo, so you can have a, a proper look at that, um, I'm just going to be sharing a link in the chat if you just give that a click you'll be able to book a one-to-one -one demo with uh, atom it takes about 30 minutes as i say the full version for your school is completely free of charge so you've got nothing to lose uh, e even just by trialing it so um yeah I, I love it so um good luck with that uh are you still there simon can i pass back to you yes david sorry i'll just start to turn my uh, screen off just so we can all focus on your Lovely looks as we uh, listen to your presentation, <laughs> Dave. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you. Yeah, That's um, all right, though. but uh, so, no, I, 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 I just, I mean, like I say, it's something I've been talking about for the last couple of years, and it continues to get better and better and better, um, and and just remains free. It's it's just, I just think it's great. And thank you, dear. And I, do you know, what? I'm going to echo that, David, because I had my first sort of session with Atom last week, and I listened to it, and I sat and I thought. How can this be free? But it's free. But if they want to give it free, I'm not going to tell them otherwise. Let's keep going. You know, I thought I'd best not say anything. Um, but then I had a look and it's really good because it does English, maths and science all in the same place. Which user have your login for maths, or login for reading, login for something. I know each one is usually paid for. This is all in one. Um, so then when I saw the presentation last week, I thought, right, I need to get on this as soon as possible. So I got set up on Monday. I think it was what day are we on now wednesday it was monday that my school got set up now um they said yeah your account's going to be live on monday i thought great i'm gonna so i logged on i thought i'll upload all i need to type in all my kids like usernames and do all that for and what i didn't realize is they'd already done it for me so they'd run school up already set it up for me so i thought what a winner i mean not many people do that so honestly from anything from this as well as thinking gosh isn't simon a really great presenter and what a fantastic class and school he has um sign up there straight away that's what i do afterwards if i wasn't already signed up now um and i'm just going to show you as well part of my presentation this is my class this morning so um, we did the baseline this morning so what the the algorithm does is it kind of learns at what level the children are working at because it's white robes as well which is what we use at school it was just perfect for us. So my class this morning, we had P on Wednesday as well. They were just doing their first initial couple of um, tests there. It didn't take too long. You teach the lead when you do the baseline one. And they were answering the questions, and they were really engaged. And at the end, I had loads of really interesting and useful data that um, I didn't have to pay for. So, And I didn't have to mark as well, which did save me quite a bit of time because usually something like that, you have to mark it. But it's all marked for you. So yeah, Atom Prime, it's wonderful. And I use it in my class and I wouldn't use it if I didn't, uh, if I didn't believe in it. And I do, which is why I do. And I'll be using it again next week as well. I'm going to set up some homework. Right. Okay. So that's Atom Prime. So I'm just going to jump to early years now. Um, I'm just going to mention the early years goal. So the early years goal for years was that the children recognize that a range of technologies used in place, such as homes for schools, and they select and use technology for particular purposes. So this is one of the goals that as a reception teacher in early years was one of the ones that children used to get ticked off on their learning goals pretty quickly because they were quite savvy with technology. But the change in 2021 for the EYFS framework was that it was no longer needed. Now, I find that a bit strange that they got rid of that specific goal considering how much technology has moved forward and how much more we use technology at the right times for the right uh, for the right purposes but if you look if you look through the early learning goals and the new framework you will see um it's kind of referenced within there so the statutory framework says in addition listening to a broad selection of stories non-fiction rhymes and poems will foster their understanding of cultural social technological and ecological diverse world so there is it is in there some it is sort of woven in there but it's not specific but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't use all this wonderful technology to help the children learn in our classroom. Now, I've got, I'm um, just going to mention an app here called Little Digits. Now, this is wonderful. This is really great for nursery and early years. Um, this app, this one is a paid for one. I think it's £1.99. But if you, have a, if you have a clever touch board, it's free on their own sort of um, app store. And I think Promethean and a few other, um, depends on what screens you have, the free. So you can use it on your screen. I use it on my iPad and I mirror. Now, um, on the here, this little girl here, this delightful girl is Delilah. This is my daughter. 
Um, so she's going to demo the app. And at the time there, she was three. No, oh, three. She was three. And what it does is it asks you, to, it, so there's little things within the app, but it says, okay, so when you, it says, what's the number four? Put four fingers on the screen. You put your four fingers, you press the screen with your four fingers and it'll say four. But I'll let my daughter demo it. She's way cuter than I am. There you go. So as you can see, she is the boss of the household, is that one. And that's my delight. So it's really good for subitizing. Now, I'm just going to share the app because it does a few other little things as well, which um, you can use in early years. But also, I've worked out that you can use it as well. I figured this out last night, actually, when I was looking through this, David, that you can use it in, in, in languages as well. So let me just get this back on here. I'm just going to need to share my screen again. Hopefully this will work. There we go. So it's called Little Digits. Full screen. Okay, so. There you go. So there's Little Digits. It's coming up now. Oh, it gets a bit loud, actually. Um, so what Delilah was doing. So these are the main games you can play. So what Delilah Little was doing, digits. she was doing the, it'll say, put this number down. Let's say this one. You've got to put two fingers. You can put any combination of two. So I'm going to put two fingers on. Two. There you go. And it's saying you've got two. So that's one that Delilah demoed for you. Five. So there's also, it's kind of when they're learning to play, you the one, two, three at the start there. It's just basically as you put your fingers down, it tells zero. you you've got down. So I'm not touching the screen. So it's at zero. But I put one finger down, one, one another finger down. Two, three, it's four, just great for five, to play, seven, nine, zero. Okay. So that's the first one. And then you've got addition there as well. So it'll say, okay. One plus. One plus one. one. So you get equals. one. One finger. You put them on. One. Just one, one moment. Get the other finger. Two. And there's the answer. So it does the same with subtraction as well. Two. And then you've got the jigsaw puzzles as well. It'll say to you, right, you need three. three. Zero plus zero equals zero. So I need to put one on one side. One. Two on the other side. Three. So it's a really good app for children One learning numbers. Plus now, two what you can do is, which I realized when I was getting this ready, if you change the language, say if you're doing Spanish in your school and you're doing numbers in Spanish, you can just whack it to Spanish. This is what we do. Change the language to Spanish. And now you've got, you can count in Spanish, so zero. zero. One. Uno. Uno. Dos. Tres. Cuatro. Cinco. Seis. There we go. And it's the same game as well. Same thing. Apart from the fact it's in a different language. There you go. Tres. Tres. There you go. Tres. Down. So that's great for languages. And at the moment, let's have a look. They do add extra languages, but they've got Italian, Portuguese. They've got lots of different languages. And you can also, if you wanted to, if you click the microphone, you as a teacher can record your voice over the numbers. So when you press the numbers with your fingers, it's the teacher's voice that's coming out. Or even the child could re-record it and then they could record their name over the number. So when someone else presses numbers, it's a child's voice coming out of the screen and not the pre-recorded one. So that's little digits. So I love the app and my daughter, she played it. She used to play it all the time, actually. And it's really good for subitizing and children manipulating and playing with numbers up to 10. Okay. And that's why I say just because it's not specific in the early learning goals, it doesn't mean that we don't start using them when we can if it's, the, if it's a benefit to the child and learning. So I'm going to jump now actually to um, special education, SEM. So any children with additional needs. So um, I'm going to mention like the five day principle about how technology can help with children with SEND. So the five a day principle, I'm going to mention specifically the five here. So which, when you break it down, it's explicit instruction, cognitive and metacognitive st strategies, scaffolding, flexible grouping and using technology. Now through using technology, you can impact all that other stuff if you use the correct apps, you can use the correct websites, use the correct technology. And I'm going to show you one that I use in my class. And again, this was from yesterday from one of my children. So 
Uh, the app notes in your device, uh, so it's already saved. Oh, little digits from my app store, Apple. Yeah, it's called little digits. Uh, is that a link there? I'll, I'll search for it in a moment later on at the end. I'll have a look for the app there, but it is, I searched for it before and it should be there. Um, but so, yeah, so notes already saved on your iPad. So it's already pre-installed and you've got Google and different versions. So I've got my, I've got four children with dyslexia in my class this year. And what I've used is I get them to use notes. And so they're independent. So what I'll say is, so you speak your, you tell the iPad your sentence. So by hitting the record button in the bottom corner, you hit that microphone, you tell the iPad your sentence, it will write it down for you. And then you've got a modeled sentence with the child's ideas. Because what I find with dyslexia and children that struggle to write, you've got that barrier that, um, and technology can break down that barrier because sometimes like, there's amazing ideas that they want to share, but they just avoid sharing it because they're just not quite sure how to write it down, how to spell it. But by talking straight into the iPad, their ideas are then on their iPad, it's still their ideas, but it's also spelt correctly. So then they can see the correct spellings modeled for them of their own ideas. Still, we still learn how to use the dictionary. We still do spelling rules, spelling rules specific to their needs, but it's that extra, it just opens up those possibilities of that child being able to have these amazing ideas and put it down on paper. So this is one of my girls at the back. So this is one of my girls that has dyslexia. Um, by the way, any child that's using my videos that have specific permission from parents to be on my videos, so please don't worry about that. Um, they're all allowed on video, the ones that I do use. So this is one of my girls doing some literacy yesterday. There you go. So that's the start of her paragraph was once in the morning. So she said it directly into the iPad. She's now writing it down. And then what she'll do is she'll go back to the iPad because she prefers it to do it in little chunks. Some of the children further down the road this way, they'll say the full sentence and then they'll write it down. But she does it in little chunks, little chunks, and then she'll, um, she'll write it down. But then that means she has these wonderful ideas. And now what she does is she loves sharing her ideas because she's really proud of this work that she's done. And I can take a picture and she's not worried about her spelling because it's spelled correctly on the iPad. There is some mistakes that sometimes happens with the iPad. Um, and this iPad that she uses is a nine-year-old iPad, so it's quite an old one, but the note still works really well the software update that they have but yeah this just really does open up possibilities for that child and i use it throughout um throughout my back row of children that have these specific needs and anyone else that needs to use it as well okay so this uh, next one i'm going to share with you is seeing ai now this is an app it's a wonderful app it's, it's it's developed by microsoft and it's free um it was developed a few, couple of years ago and it's constantly been updated it's for people with visual impairment so that's what it was specifically made for but i use it in class um to help some of my kids and i'll show you how i do that now so again i'm going to now jump back to my ipad if anyone gets dizzy just let me know because i do jump back to my ipad quite a lot yeah Got a, there we go Go back to iPad. Now I'm just doing the drag down and mirror my iPad so you can see what I'm doing. But seeing AI is free and it's well cool, if you don't mind me saying. So um, let me get it on here. Da, da, da. <laughs> okay. So basically, like I said, it's made for text. It's made for people with visual impairment. So there's some that I use in class and some that I use in the staff room for fun. Okay, so, but I'll talk about the ones used in the, in the class first. So short text, so when this TT here, you click this, now all my kids on the back row um, that struggle to read, um, have problems with access and learning, they use this with headphones, so they do this all the time. If they need to read something, especially if you use white rows, which is sometimes quite wordy, um, or we're reading a book or they want to read a text, um, all you do is you just show the iPad, you just point the iPad at a text. So I'm just gonna do the same here, there you go. The filling station. When I was four months old, my mother died suddenly and my father was left to look after me all by himself. This is how I looked at the time. So I'm just turning it down there, but you show it once and it reads the whole page to you. So you just have to quickly show it, put the iPad down and it will read it to you. Um, bonus point, does anyone know the name of that book that was uh, the first page? Anyone know before I show it? It's the, does anyone put it in there? No, no, it's Danny the Champion of the World. So it's the first page from Danny the Champion of the World. So you just, and you can, and it goes over handwritten stuff. It goes over and you can just scan it and it'll quickly read it to you. The document, 
document does the same where you hold it over a, a text and it'll scan it and then it'll turn it into text so then you've got it as text then and it'll read it and highlight it as it reads it through um product product is kind of you don't need product that's kind of it's for people where you scan barcodes person 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 is a fun thing which i'll get to in a moment um, i'm going to use you for that david if that's all right um that's more of a staff room fun thing that's something you can use there now Currency. Currency. What currency does is this is just a fun for the kids to explore. You show it some currency, and it's not just UK currency; it's any currency. Um, if you turn to the currency there, there's all the different currency. You just show the notes, and it will tell you what it is. Hopefully, this will work. Twenty pounds. There you go. Another one. Five pounds. There you go. So you just scan. You just show the show the iPad the uh, the money. So again, this is developed for people with visual impairment, so it's so they could scan what cash they had, especially Americans when it's all the same sort of size, they could scan the cash. You can hear exactly how much it's worth. Um, at the same actually with short, short text, text as well, sorry, go back to short text. You can change the language so you can scan different languages. You can also translate it to different languages as well. So say if you've got a parent that sends in um, a, a letter that's, that's typed or even handwritten, you can scan it the other way around. So from their home language into English, so you can swap it the other way around. It's very clever. Um, the uh, scene. The scene. Preview. Now, what the scene is, I kind of trick my kids here. So, the scene will. If you share, take a picture of something, it'll tell you what it thinks it is. So, I'm going to take a picture over here. Oops. Uh, I'm going to take a picture. Processing. A vase with flowers on a table. There you go. So it tells you what it can see. A vase with flowers on a table. And what I get my kids to do is when we're doing dis doing some descriptions, whether it's a photograph or an object, it will say the basic thing of what it can see. So a vase with flowers on a table. So I'll go, right, we're going to up-level that sentence. So we use this for English. We're going to write, so vase with flowers on a table. Let's describe it. Okay, so it's it's beautiful white flowers in a crystal clear in a jar sat upon a mahogany brown table. So we'll up-level that sentence just based off what seeing your eye does. So... Let me have a look over here. So it's probably just say this is my command center, as I like to call it. Let's see what it does. Processing. Probably a desk with a computer and a keyboard. There you go. So then we would up-level that sentence, and it scans, and it recognizes most things. It needs to be connected to the internet, but it recognizes things, and we up-level this sentence. And I tell my kids, there's, there's people sat in Microsoft waiting for you to take pictures. They tell you what they can see, and we up-level it and tell them, actually, it should be this. We can up-level it a bit better. What else it does is um, it does do um, scene. Okay, I'll just show you this one. World preview. So it'll just tell you what you can see. Table. This is just fun to let me move my camera there. There you go. Keyboard, mouse, screen. So it, it just Keyboard. literally tells you what you can see. Clock. Clock, window. There you go. And it spots the screen. Keyboard. Not quite sure how it does it. It just does. It's kind of wizardry and magic. Okay, it's technology. Color, it'll tell you what color it can see. Color, gray, black. Okay, the color will tell you. See, handwriting. Brown. Well, handwriting Hand, is really handwriting. good Preview. for reluctant writers. So, when you handwrite something, I'm just going to write something now. Okay. You take a picture of it. Processing. Hello, everyone. There you go. So read your text. Now, what I get my kids to do is say, right, those all those guys waiting over at Microsoft, you know, the ones we've been sending pictures to and they've been doing really poor descriptions. Um, I want to show them your amazing work, but you've got to make sure you write it quite neatly. It does work. I mean, that's not very neat, but it does read it back to you. And I'll say that when we take a picture, if they can read it, they'll send it back to tell you what they think they can see. So I've got some of my kids now that when I tell them this, right, I'm going to scan your work and send it to the Microsoft crew. They're like, I've got to do it super neat so they can read it. And then when they scan it, it comes back and it'll say what they've written. They're super proud that there's someone in Microsoft whose job it is to read their work in Tottington. <laughs> like that's their job. Um, is always waiting for them. But it's just a fun, but again, it's just, you know, it's just one of those apps that not technically made for education, but you can use it for education. And the last one that I'm going to share with you is person. So it basically you take a picture of a person, it'll guess their age. Um, based off the picture. So David, I'm going to sort of, I know we haven't got a high definition screen here, so I know I'm using his 30th birthday quite recently, but let's see what it, it, what it pings you out here. Person. Okay. One face near top edge. One face near center. 
Less than a grosser, 42-year-old man with black hair looking neutral. We take that, Dave, is that all I'll right? I'll take that, I'll take that every right, day. Right, I'll screenshot that for you, Dave, and you can put that on your passport. So, um, we just, the reason why I show you that is because I showed everyone this in the staff room, and in the staff room, I came back about 15 minutes later, and I had people going like this to try to take years off the faces and going, look, look, I've taken two years off, and then someone going, getting the head teacher in a really weird angle, and it could put them as like 60. But it's just a fun thing to do, and then um, I did it with my class as well. I got the children to guess my age, and then I think it put me at like 33. So I said, right, I'll keep that. That's 33. So they all think I'm about 33 now in my class because I use this. Okay. So that is, ooh, let's see what the time we are. Okay. That's Seeing AI. Like I said, it's a wonderful app. It's free and it's free at the moment. Um, they may start charging for it in the future, but if you get it before they start charging for it, it'll always be free. So get it and just download it on your device um, if you can. And it's not just on Apple as well. It's on, on uh, Google and all devices as well, the Play Store. So um, most people, a lot of people might have heard of Kahoot. Now, Kahoot is a wonderful interactive sort of game that you can play with people and play in the classroom. But there's a new sort of kid on the block. It's called Blue Kit. So this is Blue Kit. It's very similar, but when you answer questions, you can steal points and steal things off people, steal coins. Now, we're going to try to have a go now in the next couple of minutes. I'll show you what the website looks like first. I'm sure I'm going to create one. Now, if you're in year four, um, at the moment you have the times table multiplication test check at the end of the year. So this is really good for that, which is why I use it quite a lot. So I go to blue kit. Oh, not that one. This one. There we go. So you sign up and it's free. Again, you don't need to pay for the PayPal version. It's free. So you log in. So I'm just going to log in because I already signed up. I've used my Google account before. Hopefully it should go straight on. There you go. So you can either create a set of questions where you give four potential answers, one right answer, three incorrect. You can create a set, type your question in. Um, and you can, you can import from Quizlet. I can do a CVC if you've done it on a spreadsheet. Or you can just go to Discover and look at created one. So I'm going to type in multiplication. Okay. So there you go, 175 questions there. Now, you look down, these are the type of questions that they have, and they randomly put them in order, in a particular order. So I'm going to host it, and we're all going to try to have a play of this as well, David, so get ready. There is a prize for the winner as well. I didn't mention this. It's a real prize. Um, so um, this is what you share with the kids. These are different types of games. There's crypto hack where you steal coins off other people. There's fishing friends, but we're going to go with gold quest. So whatever game you choose, it does explain what the game is first before you use it. So we're going to use gold quest. I'm going to host it. This is what you do as a teacher. You can give it a time limit. So I'm just going to give it. Um, just going to give it. Oh, do, do, do. Yeah, I'll give it. Th I'll give it three minutes. Yeah, I'll have a three-minute game. I'm going to click time. I'm going to host it now. What you can do is now. Oh, let me turn that down. So I'm going to put in. If you go to play.bluekit.com and type in that code, you should be able to join. Or just put the QR code. If you scan that, it'll take you straight to it. Oh, there's someone already coming on. You're ready. So we've got AS Adam right now. Now you're probably thinking, Simon, you mentioned the prize here before. I hope it's a miraculous, amazing prize that's really hard to get hold of and stuff. And what it is, is it's a really deep and meaningful book. It's called Delilah Rose, The Bogey Princess. There it is about my daughter. So whoever wins, if they send David the details of your address, I'll sign it and I'll get Delilah to sign it as well. And I'll post it to you over the weekend. So this is my Delilah Rose book process. Show Delilah's favorite picture. So I'm going to give it another 30 seconds. There you go. That's one of my favorite pictures there. Bogies that stick to your teeth. Okay, hopefully no one's having their teeth. Okay. So we've got 40 people. Wow, that's pretty cool. 40 people already. Now, when we play, what happens is um, you can steal coins so you get an answer correctly and then you open up one of the boxes you'll either win gold or you can actually steal gold of other people so you kind of kind of got to look at the big screen the main screen to steal coins off people now the good thing about this is when you play kahoot quite often the person that wins the kahoot is usually the person that's the best at times tables or the best at um, whatever subject there is this one is all varied because quite often the, you know the, the, the leaderboard can go up and down up and down okay so i'm going to start um, now, here we go in five, four, three, two, one, and go. So, answer the questions, select the chest, it's three to choose from, and you collect the gold. You can take gold from others, and the most gold after three minutes wins. Here we 
Here we go. Good luck, everyone. Three minutes to win it. Go. So your, your question should be on your device, whatever you use. And AGI is now in first place with 40 gold coins. So if you get a chance to steal, steal off Anna. Anna's now in first with 100 coins. And then a quick drink, because this could get competitive. Well, Mr. P just took four gold from Jono. It's a bit horrible. And Katarina um, just took 25 from Alex W. Mel's now got 230, so heads up if you get a chance to steal it from her. But now Becky's now in first place. There we go. We've got two minutes 25 left. I'm going to stay quiet now for a minute to see what happens here. You are allowed to trash talk in the chat if you'd like. Spud. That's what we call my brother, Spud. And he would actually steal the points of people as well, just like you did, Spud. Left. And what this also does is at the end you do get the data of who answered what questions and you'll see maybe a trend of, you know, the seven times tables, a lot of children got this incorrect, so maybe you might want to go over the seven times tables afterwards as a quick thing to look at. One minute forty left. David, your competitive face is very interesting. <laughs> Keep going, David. I'm not sure what your name is on there. I um, don't know whether you kept it as David. Let's have a look further down the list. There you go. I'll keep it at the top so you might want to steal the points. Oh, Spud's just got knocked off Snazzy. The Snazzy move has now got 13 points. Oh, there you go. AG's now first. It's all changed. One minute left. I can feel the tension, and you know what? I can't see anyone's face apart from David, but I can feel the tension in their eyes. AGS is all changed. left. Eight seconds left. Okay, let's see. Here we go. Mr. P has third. Holly second. And in first place, we have Lou Wright, Lou. So what you have to do, Lou, um, you need to send David, or sometimes I have to get in contact with somehow David, and then uh, if you send me your address to David and David will send it to me, I'll sign it, I'll send it to you. Now, there's probably quite a few people going, oh, I'm so devastated. Where do I get this book from, Simon? Like, it looks like a really deep and meaningful read. If you just pop on Amazon or follow that link, um, you can just buy it off there. Okay. Oh, someone's won a oh, they, Jay Rumble. Look to win a coffin book for a class previously. One of my class's favorite books. Thank you. It's good to know. Right. Okay. So that is Blue Kit and it's wonderful and it's free as well. And there's lots of different games. My class love, 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 love the crypto hack one because you you hack people's accounts and guess their password. It's all fun, but it's, it's a really good engaging way. Right. We're nearly there at the end. I just want to share a couple more things before we go. But like I said to David before, I could probably talk for another 12 hours and still have more to say. Well, there we go. Right. Something I did yesterday. So yesterday um, was wet play. So wet play, which happens a lot in Ramsbottom and Tottington where we are because we're just between the hills. It rains a lot. And it was wet play. And we said, right, well, it's wet play, but what can we do? We need to keep, we need to, if you've ever had a wet play before, you know, the kids are full of energy that they can't get rid of. So what YouTube uh, channel called Coach Corey Martin, it's a bit like Just Dance, but what you do is you react to what's happening on the screen. And I'm going to show you it now with my class. Um, here they are. This is my class and I'm going to show you what it looks like. We head down. <gasps> This is just wet play, look. That was yesterday. Jump right! Jump! Jump! 
Over there, be quiet. Jessica, put your head down. <gasps> Run! <laughs> Watch out, Miss Thomas, you got hit by the fire. Here we go. And also, it has little trivia questions as Which well. So if you're doing a dinosaur one, you get what dinosaur you think? trivia. What you think? The answer is 12. One, two, three. Go! Oh, winter taste. The winter taste one, so there's loads of different Escape. variations. Shh. Let it pass. Shh. Beautiful reindeer is passing, guys. Don't move. No bottom burps either, guys. Won't scare it. Go. There you go. So that's Coach Corey Martin. Now, if you if you tweet if you use use him and tag him on Twitter, he tweets people back quite a lot. And what if you do if you tag him and say, "Can you give us a shout out on your next video?" Quite often he will do. Um, he does it quite a lot. So. Um, I'll just show you again. This is his website here, and they have like he's from America, so he's, he's um he, he does lots of videos. So that's one of those videos. I've got like nine million views. So you got Encanto dance one. We talk about Bruno one. There's Super Mario. So depending on the age of your children, you can use you know. And he puts them on every few days. So at Christmas is loads of snow ones, and the kids really believe they're like they're interacting with the screen. But again. It was wet play yesterday, but my kids, at the end of wet play, they were absolutely shattered. And I looked down the hallway and lots of the other ones were still bouncing off the walls and mine were like shattered. And they said, my heart's beating. Oh, I'm shattered, Mr. Hunt. And that was really good. Can we do that at lunchtime? And we did again at lunchtime because it rained yesterday as well. So it's a really good website. And again, Coach Corey Martin, they're all free. And again, tag him on Twitter. He's quite active on Twitter. You just tag him in on stuff. He'll give you shout outs at the start of the video as well. So that's Coach Corey Martin. Right. What am I up to now? It is, it is ooh, just half past now, David. So I think I've, I was going to share some um, augmented reality stuff, but I think we're just out of time. So it's up to you, David. I can I can share a couple of things, but I think we're bang on half past eight on a Wednesday night. Well, I think I think you, if you want to go for it, Simon, you're more than more than welcome to. We're, we are recording this, so if, if anyone does need to leave, we okay. can. Um, yeah, it's, it's entirely up to you. Right, I'll just share um, uh, one of these apps called Wonderscope. So there's lots, I mean, I can. this is being recorded. So screenshot Hunger Caterpillar, which is wonderful, especially in early years. AR Kids Space, if you're doing anything to do with space, fantastic shows how a rocket launches, but it places the thing in your classroom. Wonderscope, you, um, you read, the story is, uh, is alive in front of you and you say the words on the screen or get the child to say the words on the screen and it happens right in front of you. Um, Wonderscope is free. They've got about three or four different stories that you can use for free. And again, I'm just going to share my screen and I'm going to then share this little red riding code. So it's more early years of Key Stage 1 on my screen. Let's get it on here. I always get I always get told off at staff meetings or home in, so I do apologize. I don't know I'm doing it. It happens all the time. Best stop. So augmented reality, Sarah, is virtual reality is when you put things on your screen like this. So only that person can see. Augmented reality puts... Um, whatever's on your iPad in your room so you'll see it just now um, but I mirror my device to my screen just like I'm doing now so Wonderscope I'm going to put up my carpet now ignore all the toys and all the robots and stuff in the corner of my room okay Hi, my name's Cleo. Come on. Well, Cleo's Follow Cosmic me, Quest tells you how Let's like go. how how stars are created through a little story. Um, we've got red Little Red, and I'm gonna Little Red. You team up with Little Red Riding Code to, to fight against grandma. the big bad wolf. So I'm gonna play this now. So you place. There you go. You place your game board on the floor like this. So there he is. Moving around. There you go. I'm gonna place him here. Tap. And now the story is moving all around your room. The story is going to stay right in front of you. So I've got to read what they said here. So red. No, not that kind of red. I'm looking for my friend red. You got an entry now. Appears in the fourth one. You can go really close in. Oh, good, you're here. What are we working on today? I've invented something for Grandma. Can I see it? Yes, but first, 
Can you help me find the seeds? There you go, so there's the seeds in the lock. Oh. There you go, there's the seeds. I'm going to tap the screen. There you go, and as I move my, around my room, it's the same thing, please. In the watering can? Watering can. Thanks. And then what happens is you go on a little adventure with the Red Riding Hood and the story of Red, Little Red Riding Hood is in front of you on the floor. So when you do this with early years, Key Stage 1, they will sort of look up at the screen and look down in front of them, look up at the screen, look down in front of them, and they'll think it's in front of them. But the good thing is because of the story, the way it works, because of the story, the way it works, um, you say the words are on the screen. So I pass it around to children. They'll say what they can see. They'll pass it around. Um, they will... Um, press the things on the screen so it's, it's really interactive and it's called wonder screen. it's really really good it's on the app store i did check just before whether it's still there but it is a fantastic and there's loads of augmented reality apps on there right i'm just going to go back to my screen current slide so it is okay so um david i'm going to send this to you so these, this is the periodic table of really interesting useful apps um they're, they're put in different um different categories or so creativity teaching learning workflow i'll send this to you later on there the presentation so you can ping out to people if you want um but there's loads of some of the apps that i talked about there you can see um good notes is on there somewhere where's good notes you've got um little digits as well that's on there there's loads of really interesting apps that you can use on there but that's the periodic table of ipad apps there's little digits right in the middle there little digits so um that's me um any questions or anything just drop me a message or speak to david or no but i do appreciate it. it's a wednesday evening and it's now 25 to 9 i've actually got out of bedtime to do this tonight so <laughs> thanks guys it actually did me a favor tonight because delilah was on form before um but like i said if um any questions just please just give me a shout on my facebook or through to david and pass them forward but thank you for listening and i do appreciate your time and sticking with me because i do get overly excited and giddy but that's just because <laughs> i love what